Break time. Taking a break is brought to you by our good friends up at Banks Boats. What is taking a break? Well, you know what? It's something just like this. It's all the other stuff that I love about our sport. It's all about the ducks, the dogs, and the decoys. Let's check it out. Scott, we're here at Bird Studies Canada in Port Rowan. That's right. Ontario? Yes, yeah, that's right, yes. Um, Long Point Waterfowl is administered through Bird Studies Canada, and we've been partnering with them um, probably since about 1991, and we've got a great relationship with Bird Studies Canada. Very nice. What, what all programs do you, do you run? You do a little bit of everything, right? Yeah, Bird Studies Canada has a lot of different uh, birding type programs, a lot of passerine and, and raptor type stuff. Uh, Long Point Waterfowl, we really concentrate primarily on waterfowl. We do some other water bird work. We're doing some crane work right now. And um, there's different uh, areas within, I guess, waterfowl conservation and management that we work. Our, our big one is uh, research and uh, student research. We, we uh, supervise and support quite a number of graduate students each year. And we do that for a number of reasons. One, so that we can uh, get more research out, because students will work 16 hours a day, and we won't. Um, uh, they're young and enthusiastic. And the other thing is we're trying to uh, train highly qualified personnel so that when they're done being graduate students, they can go out in Canada and the U.S. and, and do wonderful things. And this is basically all around the Great Lakes itself, right? That's yeah, probably 90% of our work is on the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. uh, the lower Great Lakes especially, that being uh, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, and Lake St. Clair. Uh, most of our work's on the Canadian side, but we do do some work on the U.S. side and partner on the U.S. side. And, but anything we do on the Canadian side has implications for the U.S. side as well. Ted, this is Long Point Waterfowl's Avian Energetics Lab? That's correct, yeah. So uh, Scott had mentioned previously that we have people from all over North America that uh, send birds into us to, to process energetics. We've got Spencer here. He was supposed to be on the boat today, but got his toes a little bit wet, so he's in here processing birds. And I'm just going to walk through the principles of how this all works. So essentially, we've got researchers that send us uh, either whole birds or parts of birds. There's just a widgeon here on a project coming in. We take those birds. Uh, this is a bunch of surf scoters coming from uh, Newfoundland area. Uh, we pluck them down. Uh, we remove all their ingesta. And that's just to take out excess protein that's not actually involved in the energetics of the bird or that being the energy resources they need for things like migration and reproduction. So they don't use that protein, so we remove it. The birds, once they've been dissected out, get chopped into small little square bits and we essentially turn them into jerky. And from there, we've got an orange Julius grinder that grinds it down into a fine homogenate like this. We then sieve that through and we put them into uh, something that's called a thimble. So we end up with something dry homogenate like this. From there, those birds are put into this ether extractor. And the principle here is that we boil ether through these thimbles and the ether removes the fat from the homogenate. So the difference in the weights from before and after is the amount of fat that that bird had on it. From that point, they're muffle burnt in this muffle oven and that turns the entire sample into this little bit of ash. And the principle behind that is that the difference in weight is the amount of protein that the bird had. So the process through all of these stages goes from a nice looking bird like this down to a bag of homogenate and ash. And from there we can tell how much fat that bird had, how much protein it has, and we can also dissect out different things. So if it's a reproductive time and you want to know how much energy is going into egg production, we can remove follicles and things that way and say that this much protein, this much fat is in there, and this is where it's come from in terms of breast muscle or abdominal fat and things that way. And so that's what we do here. Most of our work's done on waterfowl, but we've done things like wood frogs and flying squirrels all the way up to wild turkeys and things bigger that way. So that's the principles of what goes on in here. And we use this place as a great, great tool for training up and coming biologists. Spencer's here uh, from, from high school. He's hoping to get into uh, some college work in wildlife, and he's just here spending some time learning the ropes and getting into the system. Now, you referenced the U.S. side. Are you going to be involved with the Bluebill Transmitter Program in uh, Erie, PA? Uh, yes, we are. We've, we've got a close relationship with the uh, Erie, PA folks down there. And we actually up here started tracking SCOP with transmitters uh, about five years ago. We've implanted 45 birds. They were interested in implanting some down there, so it, it made sense for us to have a partnership. Um, so we're going down there next week to assist them and um, yeah, they've raised all their own money, so they're gonna be implanting 10 birds, and then those birds will be tracked on our website, and then we'll, we'll group the data from all the birds together um, to answer those key questions about scop ecology and scop movement patterns and stuff like that. Very so nice. We're really, we're really excited about it. It's gonna be a great partnership, yeah. Scott, what are some of the studies that are going on on the Great Lakes currently? 
Well, we have a number of graduate student projects, and, and that's most of our research now is graduate student based. Uh, we have one student working on sandhill cranes. Sandhill crane numbers have increased substantially in Ontario, which is a wonderful thing. But they're causing some crop problems and uh, crop depredation problems, and there's a, a push for a season. So we figure we need to know more about them before that ever happens. Uh, we're looking at uh, wintering canvasbacks and redheads. The number of overwintering birds has increased substantially, but now we have some birds starving to death, so we're looking at that. Um, we're also looking at submerged aquatic plant availability. Um, the feeling being is that spring is a critical time for water birds uh, migrating through here. And we know that in midsummer we've got peak SAV or submerged mm -hmm. aquatic vegetation availability, but we know it's spring, it's the minimum availability. And we want to see how low it goes in spring because that's when birds are migrating through here. They need to put on body fat for migration as well as uh, body fat and protein for reproduction. So that's a critical time in the annual cycle. So we've got a student out there. Uh, Robin Churchill that's doing some diving and, and all through the bay looking at that. And it's never been done in, in quite this fashion before. He's diving mm -hmm. um, at a very cold time of the year and, and it's, it's an interesting project. And we've got uh, several others as well. Bird Studies Canada. Can we find you on, online on the internet? Yes, you can find us online. We're on Facebook and uh, also we've got a, a kind of a bi-weekly um, email distribution list. So we send out news based on work we're doing, but mm -hmm. also other newsworthy things. So you can send us an email and uh, we'll put you on that uh, email distribution list. Can we see some of the transmitter studies on there also? Oh uh, Yes, the transmitter studies are on there. We've got the SCOP transmitter studies, our SWAN transmitter studies, and our crane transmitter studies. We're putting 10 more transmitters transmitters on cranes this year as well, so um, that's w which will be really exciting. Mm, yeah. It is. Yeah. Scott, we appreciate your time and effort. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure being here, and uh, it's been very educational. Thank you very much, Jeff. I really enjoyed talking to you, and look forward to watching your show. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Break time's over. Let's let this little guy go and get back to the hunt. I thought he was going to crash and burn there for a second. <laughs> that happens sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we do a duck release at our Pima Tuning Waterfowl Festival. <laughs> Going right in with a group of buffies. <laughs>